So let me ask you more about this system. Yeah. Was it like written down somewhere? Yeah, it was my whole gym opening system. It's like how I would do these launches. Did you have videos in like a module? Okay, watch Everything. step one, two, three. So so the way that I had structured this, the, the old gym launch version is we would fly out to do these turnarounds, oh, right? I have more questions about this. Oh, because, sorry, yeah. Well, I want to ask you because I'm sure that there's a lot of people who want to, to create modules or you yeah. know learning modules or teaching modules, mm -hmm. whether they are doing it in-house for them people or they want to learn or maybe create their own. Like courses are a big thing, right? Yeah. Um, but, but so, like, were these underproduced, well-produced, overproduced? Like, the videos, was it like... A mixture of both. Okay. Yeah, because I had hired a guy to do, like, really professional videos when I did the original launch, like okay. the old school one, that walked the gym owners through, like, here's how to service these customers. Okay. Here's how to do nutrition consults. Here's how to sell supplements. Here's how to sell the membership on the back end. And those were all, like, really nicely done professional videos. Yeah. And so I had everything there already for the back end. The sales training, I had already trained my sales guys with. So that training already existed. The yeah. scripting and that sales training was brutal and fucking awesome. Yeah. Still, like, it's interesting because when you make a training with the intention of, like, someone has to go through this and sell shit on the other side and it's my money on the line, it's different than when you try and make a course on sales. Right. Because right. people try and make a course on sales and justify the cost that they charge someone for it. Mine was an hour-long training that taught someone how to fucking close. And it was this particular product at this price point for the gym. So it was super specific selling, right? Here's how you set the chairs up. Here's how the office needs to look when they walk in the door. This is a joke you make. This is how you do the tour. When they sit down, make sure they sit up on the weight. Make sure they look at the weight. If they cry, they buy. Make sure they sit down. Like, you know, you do the whole thing, right? And it was all methodical, strategic. I'd done 4,000 of these. Like, I knew, like, we know this conversation. Like, I could still do it. Yeah. Still. <laughs> And, um, and so anyways, all that was stuff was documented. The only thing that wasn't documented was just the ads and the landing pages. And I said to show how to place them. Yeah. So I'd, all I had to build was just that. And we're just talking about Facebook ads or yeah, Google ads. ads. Yep, it was Google and Instagram. Or sorry, uh, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Yep. And we already had the ads. They didn't even make them. I was just like, this is the ad. And they would use my video because I knew my videos worked. So it's just like, boom, post this. Goes to this page, which is a copy paste of the page that I already made. Change the name of the city, right? Like, that's it. I was like, and when they, like, here's how you work the leads, which was the sales training the guys had. Here's how you sell them, sales training the guys had. And then the back end, they already had the training for it. So it was proven. It was already there. No I just brand. didn't have the ads part, like, documented. So I documented that. Yeah. And um, I sent it out. I called the other guys. We crushed it. And then, and then, and then the average gym that, of those first, like, 30 or 40 that bought, um, did $30,000 in additional collected cash not membership, not like contract value, like cash collected in their first 30 days. So you were a hero? Overnight. They were just like... Yeah, overnight success. <laughs> yeah. and, then, um, and then, I mean, as soon as that happened, they are like, what else do you have? And I was like, well, glad you asked. You know, I have, I have my three-year licensing where I'll give you all the rest of the things that I used to run, run and scale my gyms. Yeah. And so that, was, that became Gym Legacy, which is the back end of Gym Launch, which was the two programs that we had front end and back end which fundamentally is actually exactly how I did weight loss programs. We had front end and back end. We would define end program. We sell in continuity, same process. Just, they were just added zeros. That's all it was. Um, and there was no, the, the cost of goods is significantly lower because it's licensing. You know what I mean? Licensing materials, licensing ads, licensing pages. It's not, you know. Yeah, and, and if I can just point out what I'm hearing too is you got rid of partners. Yeah, right. I'm not against them now. I, I, I had to learn, I had to learn how to do business on my own in order to learn how to partner later. Yeah, but I also think, you know, self-awareness is key. Yeah. Like sometimes, uh, you know, Nadal is a great tennis player. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't play doubles yeah. that I know of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? He's a solo player for a reason. Or, you know, and we had Russell Wilson on this show, who's the quarterback mm -hmm. now of the Denver Broncos from the Seahawks, you know, and Russ is a team player. Mm -hmm. So if you're a team player, you know, and that works for you, yeah. that could be fine. Yeah. In your model, it wasn't working. It was not. And, and you weren't getting the hint until you finally did. Yeah. I think Layla was a strong nudge there. Like, yeah. Yeah. But those are, those are yeah. super good lessons for people who may not have to make them uh, the yeah. hard way. That's... Yeah, if, if you're going... And this is because I get questions like this all the time for newer entrepreneurs. It's like, you know, either they're in a partnership, and this is how most people partner. Hey, we like each other, and we kind of like the subject. Let's get into business together. Terrible reason to get into business together. Yeah. But like Y Combinator, we were talking about this off, off, offline two seconds ago. Um, y Combinator has shown that three partners, three founders is actually like the, like the sweet spot. Like three to four-ish actually works the best for 
building huge companies. Now, that's huge companies. Not everybody's trying to build a huge company. Right. And the founders that they have have very specific roles and functions. So you've got the guy who's the you know, head of coding, and then you've got the promoter who's head of sales and marketing. Then you have the operator, typically, which will be kind of the third leg of the stool, which is kind of the minimum three roles that exist. And so if you are going to partner with people, they have to have a clear role or responsibility that is different than yours. Complementary skills. 100%. Yeah. So complementary skills, aligned values. And if you are partnering, the splits don't need to be even. And that's often a common thing, which is like, okay, there's three of us, therefore we should have thirds. That isn't necessarily true. You know, like some people might be bringing a bigger network or, some, you know, other things to the table that, that tip the scales. And, and that's, you know, that's part of business. But all, all that to say, I'm not against partnerships. I, at that time, did not understand how to partner and therefore was only able to successfully have business when it was just me. Fair enough. Incredible. I mean, there's just so much there. Um, let's pivot a little bit. Uh, yeah. I want to get granular on some of this advice because, you know, again, when I started this show, it was I was sailing right into the perfect storm of the recession. Mm -hmm. um, I got my ass handed to me mm -hmm. and then had to, you know, climb back out of the pit that I've jumped into, basically. And, and I wanted this to be the solution for me, and it turned out to be exactly what I needed, mm -hmm. but also for a lot of other people. Um, what's, what's a deeply held belief that you had maybe three to five years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, and it can be business or personal, yeah. but like something you, you really held to be true that you no longer believe. Like, do you still trust people the way that you did? Sounds like you, you, you I mean, I know nothing about psychology uh, except through my own <laughs> research and, and therapy yeah. and all that. It sounds like you had a very codependent relationship, especially with father figure in your life, right? Sure. So, but, so naturally you had this very trusting mm -hmm. uh, character. Yeah. Um, did that change over time? Do you still have uh, yeah. that strong trust? So I think that so a lot of the revelations I think came in retrospect more than were active decisions. I'd say the vast majority of the things where I, I made mistakes and stumbled into the right way and then tried to think like what was different than last time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think one of them that you touched on is trust, but a different version of that is like the gift taken relationships. And I think that I was, I'm, I think I am naturally, like if there's a, on a scale from one to 10, like, you know, one being a taker and 10 being a giver, I'm, I'm naturally a 10. Um, and tens get run all over. Mm -hmm. Ones don't get opportunities because they're always just trying to take and people just get tired of them. The vast majority of people are tit for tatters. So you give, I give, which is like the fives, which is the vast majority of the population. It's transactional. Mm -hmm. And I think that what happened over my career is that I shifted from a 10 to like an eight. Um, and they've actually done a lot of game theory research on this and found that like eight out of 10 is the, is the proper amount of give take for optimal outcome. Really? Okay. And so, so to be clear, you're saying you used to be a giver, I just gave all 10 out of 10, and now you've ratcheted that down to 8 out of 10, mm -hmm. and that's about the right range, you think? Yeah. You just have to know when it is your turn to take. Right. And also, I would guess, because I can speak from that same experience, very relatable. I'm, I'm sort of right there with you, and I was going to ask this just for personal selfish reasons, too. Sometimes I feel like I'm always the one giving, mm -hmm. but then I, I remember that... You know, if you're truly giving without oh, yeah. the expectation of return, yeah. then sh I shouldn't have those feelings, right? Because, you know, yeah. you give it, and then if it's without expectations and it's not transactional, then yeah. you shouldn't care. You know, it's interesting because, like, I, I spend a lot of time defining words. Um, and so I think there's, the, like, it's, it's worth looking into, like, the, what the word give means. Um, because, you know, what is the difference between giving and donating? Right. One would be... One has no expectation of return, I would imagine, with donation. Giving might not necessarily have no expectation. I don't know. Like, it's a, it, like these are the things that I jam on. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I, don't, I would normally pull my phone up, but like, let's go look the word up. Well, I, I love riffing on this because um, I think it's, uh, it depends on the person, and it's also it's all about intention. Yeah. It's the same reason, you know, some people give to a certain charity mm -hmm. and they want to be known for status. Sure. Uh, or conscience, mm -hmm. 
or maybe it's like uh, brownie points in yeah. the life after, mm -hmm. or maybe it's to feel good right now because yeah. you know maybe your life is trash and it's like if I do a little bit of good, yeah. it'll offset my feeling. There's lots of different you know motivations, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's very interesting. So you think that you've changed the most in the giving category? You've ratcheted it only down to an eight, though. That's still I think it's, pretty high. It's, oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, you've you've consumed some of my stuff. Like it's still very, very, very much give give centric. Yeah, the like, thing you say in every video yeah, is, I have nothing to sell you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that. <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from, and where I'm going. Like I say, man, I say, man, I say, man. I always said it. It's not about the destination.